Hey guys, so we have got a brand new product design ready for you now. Um, it is the mini notebook cover with the Super Whamadine pen holder FOE. Okay, that's gonna keep it closed. And we've got a little piece of ribbon that we can use as a marker and it slips in there, okay? So the size book that I used to um, test this out is the mini composition. It's three and a quarter by four and a half. This is a five by seven pattern. So what you will need is the, the pattern. As always, we're gonna hoop up for all our in the hoop projects. We're gonna hoop up a piece of medium weight cutaway. And make sure our hoop's nice and tight. You will need a piece of marine vinyl that is um, six by eight. You will need a piece of Ollie Fun or another piece of vinyl if you want it all vinyl that is also six by eight. You will need two pieces of marine vinyl. I'm doing complementary colors for um, the Gryffindor House Crest um, booklet notebook cover. Um, you will need uh, two of these that are six by two and a half. Um, I went looking for goldenrod one quarter inch grass grain, gro grain, grass grain, uh, this ribbon, the ribby ribbon. Um, I am out of the one quarter inch, so we are going to do the three eighths of an inch and hopefully it'll look okay. And then you need three pieces of FOE that are two and a half inches. Okay, and as always, I print out my stitch sheet. Um, number one is die lines, duh. Number two is tacks. Um, number three is, nope, number one is, you know what? I have no idea. I, <laughs> I believe number one and number two are both die lines. Number three are tack downs. Number four is a design element number five is a design element and number six is to attach backs and uh pockets so let's see how the, wow Ooh. remember this is only the second time i've ever sewed this so you know cut me some slack let's throw it in the hoop and run die line number one and i'll tell you what it is in just a minute back in a moment oh hey look at me not knowing what i'm doing i was correct Dial line one is just the outline. So guys, what you need to remember is that when you get this pattern, I am going to have combined one and two, okay? The new pattern, when I upload it, will only have five steps for this pattern instead of six. I, I need to combine those two. So I'm gonna go run number two and let's pretend I did those together, okay? Okay, so. <laughs> um, or what am I doing? Okay, yes, there we go. Okay, so now we have done our first ha -ha, um, die lines, and this is for placement. So you will need your three pieces of S and the three pieces of FOE and your piece of ribbon. All right, so we are going to do our FOE first, and we are going to need three. Yeah, let's go ahead and make it six little pieces of tape because I did buy stock in 3M and now you're funding um, my retirement, yes. And then we will also need one piece of um, tape for the ribbon. Let's do the ribbon first because it's easy. All right, we're just gonna line it up um, with the top, this die line right here, okay? The top, if your hoop's like this, it's the die line that's for to the far right. If your hoop's like this, it's the die line that's at the top. Um, we wanna bring it down so that it hangs about a half an inch below the whole body die line. We're gonna tape that right there. And then we're not gonna tape this. We are gonna use something more permanent. Well, not permanent, permanent, because here shortly we're going to be taking all of this off and blah, blah, blah. But I am going to pin it out of my way. Yay, pins. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this puppy this way, and I'm going to take a piece of my FOE, 
and I'm going to fold it in half as so. Line up the ends. Actually, I'm going to turn this back like this because I want to give you vertigo and I hope you're getting seasick. And again, about a quarter of an inch past the die line. And we're going to tack that right there. And then I am also going to, to keep it laying flat so it doesn't fold up on me because it wants to. And then we're going to grab the next one. There we go. And about a quarter of an inch past our die line. And then tape. And then more tape. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to do this one. And we're going to fold our FOE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this time we want the loopy going that way. So we're going to do about a quarter inch. Yeah, we do, do, do. And then tape it down. And then here's some more tape. Now we're going to throw this Michigas, this Michigana, this thing of a doodle back in the machine. And it's going to go tack, 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 tack. We'll pull it out and float our vinyl back in a second. Okay, folks, so we have blurg. Um, we have tacked down our FOE and our ribbons. Woohoo! I'm gonna tear up all of this tape, but I'm not gonna throw it away because you know how I love my tape. I'm gonna be using it all again later. Um, I'm gonna leave this one down. So we're just gonna take up the internal tapes. How's that? Okay? And then we're gonna take our vinyl and we are gonna center it left, right, top, and bottom. And then I am going to tack down the corners of it so it doesn't curl up on me because I'm using this really cool, neat, new metallic. Um, and I don't want to mess anything up. And then I'm going to put it in the machine and I am going to run Color Stop 4, which is goldenrod. It's going to be the crest on the front. And Color Stop 5. I have it doing it dark burgundy on here, but since this is red, I'm probably going to do it in black to see how that looks, and that's the words. You can skip any of that that you want, okay? But this is the design phase, so back in a second. Okay, happy fun time, guys. So we have done the um, front design and the back design. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity for you to quickly clip your jump stitches. Um, and it is not going to have too many. Yay! I know how much you guys really just love jump stitches. And I got to learn all over again how much people love jump stitches from the intern. Okay, so all of the stuff that we need to do is now on the other side. This side! Yay! Okay, so first we're going to take our... Um, <laughs> We're gonna clean this up a little bit. And you know what? I said we're gonna use Ollie, but that Ollie is really thin and you can see through it and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think it's gonna make it look blurg. So let tell you what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and just grab um, a piece of red. Yep, let's go ahead and just grab a piece of red plain old red marine vinyl, and we are going to use that as, um, we're going to use that. So we need a piece of marine vinyl. Um, I wish the Ollie were thicker because I'm a little not happy about how thick the turn is going to be on this, but you know what? We shall live with it. Okay, so these are the die lines for these guys. Um, I just noticed putting my back on, I'm going to totally obscure them. So you may want to, you don't have to, if you're really good at placing stuff, you may want to go ahead and, because your machine will not stitch this far out, give yourself some manual die lines on where we're gonna put um, those two little pieces of black vinyl. So let's go ahead and place our red vinyl, and we're just gonna tapey tapey and tapey tapey. Yeah. Are you tapey tapey? <laughs> You're welcome. I had to add that extra commentary. Two people bought this. Okay. And they were like, I want two panels. I want two panels with four panels. This means I only have to cut it in half. Yes, you only have to cut it in half. Go ahead and leave the two pan. And look, it gives you dotted lines. You can cut on the dotted line, can't you? All right. Um. <laughs> Yes. Stop. All right, so now we take these 
Sorry to interrupt, guys. I, I keep forgetting what it's like to have. <clears throat> so we're going to take the um, little pieces of black vinyl that we've already cut, and we're going to line up their straight edges right there. And guess what we put here? If you said... <laughs> Hush. If you said tapey tapey, you are correct. Let me put a little piece of tape there, put a little piece of tape there. I'm going to go ahead and pull off the next tape. Hey guys, I know that you're used to professional quality videos. And I'm sorry that my intern doesn't understand the red lights on. We're recording. This is live. No, is it live? No, it's not live. <laughs> I just got told to shut it by a 13-year-old. Love you. Love you too. When this goes horribly wrong, you'll know it was all her fault. Okay, so there we go. All we have to do is throw this back in and run our last um, stitch. It's the tack together. It's going to attach the back and the flaps. Back flaps. Oh, ho, ho. Um, and then we'll cut it out and we'll be, we'll be done-ish. Back in a second. Okay, so we are done stitching. Okay, it is time to remove our tapes, all our tapes. We don't need any, we don't need your stinking tape. Okay, we can remove our pen, yay. We can flip it over and remove, oh my gosh, look at all of that tape, oh no, not that. And we can remove uh, that tape too. And we can remove this tape, holy buckets. I think this whole thing's just made out of tape. And any of our little stragglers and dooba hitchies and jump stitches. We're just gonna trim those out. We're good there. We're good there. Oops, that's a da da. We're gonna unhoop. Kapoof. And unhoop. Now, ha <laughs> Usually I just take my little, anything like square like this, I go ahead and just cut, 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 cut with my uh, ruler and my. Um, Roto cutter. The problem is on three sides, left, right, and top, I have got pieces that are jutting out. Oh no, not that. So, this is probably not the prescribed use for a um, easy ruler. Um, they're aluminum. If you sew, you have one of these. But I'm going to cheat because I want. And we're gonna have to do more cuts this way, but I'm not hand cutting anything. But I've slipped this ruler between the vinyl and the FOE, and then when I cut, I have not cut the FOE. Now the downside is I have to flip it over, and I have to slip this ruler between the stabilizer and the FOE on the back side, jam it right up to the seam, all right? just like that. Then I am going to take my easy ruler and if I did this correctly, which is always a 50-50, all right, if I did this correctly, my cut on the back and my cut on the front will match perfectly and I haven't cut my FOE. Yay! So the way we do that, take our easy ruler, um, it's aluminum, it's not the best idea in the entire world. Okay, and then we're gonna, I don't have enough room to work. I need to raise the height of that camera, don't I? Um, about one eighth of an inch. Boy, everything's grabby today. And whoop, making sure that my ribbon's behind it. Flip it over shove it, oops, between the stabilizer and the ribbon. Okay, see what I'm doing there? See how it's going? Okay, all right, now take my ruler, make sure that's up right against the stitch line, one eighth of an inch above my stitch line. Wanna make it all professional and perfect looking, as opposed to everything else I do. Okay. 
One more side to go. Yay. All right, remember, we want the FOE behind our aluminum ruler, just like that. And if you're not a dressmaker and you don't have one of these, I think they're $3 on Amazon. Um, but you, they're, because they're aluminum, you're not going to be slicing through it. But you're going to get that nice matchy-matchy line front and back without having to use scissors. Okay. Remember, between the stabilizer and the FOE for the back side. So shove it right in there. Shove, shove, shove. Oops. All right. Are we in there? Yep, we're in there. Shove it in there. Okay. Do, do, do. One eighth of an inch. One eighth of an inch. You're still going to have to do some hand cutting because it's got rounded corners. I know you hate me, but I think rounded cutters, uh, cor the rounded cutters, rounded corners will look better and more professional, neater, more artistic. Or I just like making your life hell, which according to Bailey is true. Okay. There we go. There we go. Oh, wow. Look how awesome that looks. Now let's like grab our little hinky dinky little bit. Our hinky dinky little bit slides right in there. Then slides right in there. We're gonna put our ribbon. And you might want to, ooh, fray that end or tie it off or put a bead. Um, you could probably even in a separate hooping do a, um, um, a felty or something on it. Then we're gonna close up our book all nice and tight. And then we're gonna grab a pen. Somebody got a pen around here? All right, and we are going to go through the top. Arr. Wow, that pen wants to grab. Let's do this pen. I'm gonna go there and there and there and there. And so, oh my God, look at our little itty bitty pocket. I'm sorry, these are now going to be called posh books. Um, one of the fans, and look at that. One of the fans was like, oh, little posh books, I love those. And I'm like, oh my God, posh books, I love that. That is so awesome, I think I'm going to steal that. So, posh book. This is the Gryffindor Light Stitch Crest with bravery, courage, and determination on the back. One hooping, folks. One hooping. Yay. All right. Oops. There you go. See you on the internet.